Hello and welcome everyone to the Carolinas Association of Collegiate Registrars and Admission Officers Virtual College Fair. We are so thrilled that you are joining us today and we have a great lineup of panelists for you. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You may use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you today. This is one of many different sessions happening, so make sure that you sign up for other sessions taking place immediately after this one. And this presentation, along with all of the others, are being recorded and will be available within about a week at strivescan.com forward slash Carolinas. I'll put that link in the chat as well. But now on to our main event. I'm going to turn it over to our first institution. We're going to start off by hearing from Rollins College whenever you're ready. Hi, good evening, everyone. My name is Christina and I am the admission counselor for Rollins College. Um, I will answer any questions if you wanna submit those just as our host said, um, but I'll get started about Rollins. So we are a liberal arts institution located and, in the I'm heart. Sorry, Rollins College to interrupt. I wanted to let you know that on our end, we're seeing the presenter view. I didn't know if you wanted to change it to be oh. the full screen or not. Yes, thank you. Of course, sorry to interrupt. No, that's fine. If you up at the display settings. Mm -hmm. Ah, thank you. Of course. Um, so we're located in the heart of Winter Park uh, in Orlando, Florida. So it's about 15 minutes to downtown Orlando. As a liberal arts, liberal arts institution, our goal is to have our students be well-rounded. So we want you, of course, to have the expertise within your chosen major, but we do want you to continue developing skills that employers are finding important. So creative problem solving, critical thinking skills, the ability to read, write, communicate effectively, present, analyze data, things that you've been doing since you started school, but just really honing in on them throughout college. Um, so again, we were founded 1885, we're the oldest college in the state of Florida. Um, and this picture here is an image of campus and aerial view. So you can see that we are abutted by Lake Virginia there on the one side. And what you can see on the other side of this image is our downtown um, sort of heart of Winter Park. And so it's an extension of campus for our students. They really do get the best of both worlds in that Winter Park is a small town feel. It has a very sort of Northeastern small town um, vibe. Um, but then again, we're just 15 minutes to downtown Orlando. So a large sort of metropolis. Now, in terms of who makes up our campus, we're pretty small, just over 2000 students. About 50% are coming from the state of Florida, 40% are out of state and 10% are international representing over 60 different nations. And 27% of our students do identify as a student of color. Now, the way that we approach our liberal arts um, education, it's again, not a new way of learning, but we are taking our 21st century approach through our Rollins Gateway. And so this is with the understanding that, you know, gateways represent new beginnings, new journeys, new paths to explore. And so we are very intentional in that you are, of course, going to have the academic portion of your time at Rollins, but we know that learning is not just happening in the classroom. And so how else are we subsidizing? How else are we um, enhancing that for you during your four years? So our gateways um, stands on three pillars, our future-proof education, liberal arts in action, and our Rollins results. So for the first um, two pillars kind of here on this slide, for our academics, we offer over 60 different academic programs. So that's a combination of majors, minors, and pre-professional tracks. Um, you also do not have to officially declare your major until the end of your sophomore year. So when you apply to Rollins, you're applying to the institution, not to an individual major or you know, college um, separately within. So you have that freedom to explore. Our average class size is about 17, with most of our courses being capped anywhere between 20 to 30 students. So you're really never going to have a large lecture. It's really hard and difficult to sort of remain anonymous in the classroom. Our professors are the ones who teach our courses. And so you have access to them, again, not only in the classroom, but outside of it. And I think that filters into that ranking that we do receive, number one, for our strong commitment to undergraduate teaching. Now, in terms of additional support outside of the classroom, we have over 100 student organizations on campus. Students are very active in their student orgs, clubs, hobbies. It's very easy to start a new one. We have fraternity and sorority life, just to name a few. We have different cultural and religious organizations. We are division two for our athletics um, in the NCAA conference. We offer different um, 
expressive arts groups, debate team, all sorts of ways to stay engaged on campus, including studying abroad, which about 77% of our students um, engage in during their time at Rollins. For our last pillar, the um, Rollins results. So this data came from the class of 2018, 97% did let us know that uh, 12 months after graduating, they were engaged in the workforce, graduate school or volunteer service. So we're really excited to see our students going on to pursue their goals and their dreams. Um, the lists here are some companies as well as graduate schools that they've gone on to. And I always love mentioning our Crummer Graduate School of Business that's sort of right here in the center of that second column. As we do have um, our MBA program right on the same campus as our undergraduate program. So if you've thought about going for your MBA, we do offer an accelerated program, which is a five year opportunity. So the first three years are going to be at the undergraduate level and the final two will be at the, um, at the graduate level. So you, you'll end up with both your BA and your MBA at the end of five years. Now just some quick profile um, information for our first years applying. So three ways to apply, the Common App, the Coalition App, or our own institutional Rollins app. It's up to you which you choose. There's no application fee to apply and we do take a holistic review. So we look at everything you submit to us. We are test optional. We have been since 2008. So that's not a new practice for us. It's not a new way for us to evaluate applications and it's not going away. Um, so if you apply test score optional, again, that's not gonna harm your application and you're potentially still eligible for merit scholarship. Otherwise, if you plan to submit scores, you can see our ranges here. Our average core and weighted GPA is a 3.4. Um, and then you'll have the essay portion as well as um, involvement. So I take time to fill this out, whether you attach a resume or not. Um, and then we only require one letter of recommendation from your guidance um, or college counselor. You're welcome to submit additional, but just that's our requirement. Just some deadlines to keep in mind. We offer both early decision and regular decision. Early decision is going to be that binding option. So you've fallen in love with Rollins. It's the only place you want to attend because if you are accepted, we do um, anticipate you will um, come here and withdraw applications elsewhere. Otherwise, our regular decision deadline does also share the first November 15th deadline for priority scholarship consideration. And some quick, quick facts about uh, financial aid. 95% of students receive aid. Our scholarships range anywhere from 10 to 32,000. You're automatically considered when you apply. And we do accept Florida prepaid, Florida Bright Futures, and the EASE grant. Um, and any outside scholarships that you um, are awarded. So thanks for tuning in. Fantastic. What a great way to get us kicked off today. Thank you so much, Rollins College. We are going to hear now from Johnson and Wales University whenever you are ready. Thank you. PowerPoint has not been my friend working virtually. Um, during the pandemic. However, my name is Lisa Koenig. I am an admissions counselor um, at Johnson Wales University. My territory is Western North Carolina and Southwestern Virginia. Um, so some fun quick facts. I just have the one slide about the university. We were founded in 1914 by two women, Gertrude Johnson and Mary Wales. One thing I find pretty amazing is that 1914, we had a world war going on. And in the middle of a war without the right to vote, these two women started a university. It started as a business school. Most people know us as culinary and hospitality, but we have evolved into so many more things since that point. We have two campus locations. Our main campus is where we were founded in Providence, Rhode Island. Uh, that is our largest campus. We have 7,000 students in Providence. Fun fact, the city of Providence during the academic year has about 50,000 college students. We are joined by institutions like Brown, Rhode Island College, Providence College, Bryant, Rhode Island School of Design, Salve Regina, so you would be in a lot of good company. Our Charlotte campus is our smallest. We have just under 2,000 students in Charlotte, and it's more of our urban campus. We are right in the middle of Uptown on Trade Street. It's an open concept, so people can drift through the campus. We share parts of it with Bank of America, um, so it's a great meet and greet sort of a place to be. Charlotte is the second largest banking city in the nation. We are the third largest healthcare system in the Southeast. So you'll see some of our popular majors do mirror 
um, what's going on in the city around us. So of course, most people know us for culinary baking and pastry and hospitality. Um, we are well positioned to train students at both campuses for those degrees, but we have some really exciting new prospects. We have recently added at the Charlotte campus public health, health science. Um, we have a food innovation and technology track, which ties in very nicely with the research park up in Kannapolis, just up the street from us. Um, so think packaging, think farm to table, think lobbying at Capitol Hill for changes to the food industry. One of our new fantastic uh, majors we have up in Providence, Rhode Island is cannabis entrepreneurship. And this is a huge field. So master growers are expected with a BS in cannabis entrepreneurship to have a starting salary of about $80,000 per year. So growing industry, this is the non-psychedelic, non-hallucinogenic side of the cannabis industry. And of course, we always have our hospitality, hotel and lodging, business, economics, psychology, sports entertainment, and many of our tracks will lead on to graduate school work, um, whether it's in our physician's assistant program in Providence or at one of our master's degrees. CTE scholarships are available. If you are involved in a national student organization, please indicate that when you apply to Johnson & Wales. It could be a minimum of $2,000 scholarship up to full tuition. We are inviting students to visit campus on both of them, so you can schedule those directly online. We are the JWU Wildcats. Uh, we play in the NCAA division on both campuses, and depending by sport, it could be D2, it could be D3. We have over 150 different clubs and organizations uh, can't, that's system-wide, I'm sorry. Everything from Greek life to, um, gosh, public um, government to ice carving to um, anything that your mind can come up with. Uh, we are able to support all new organizations. If you have something that you're passionate about that we do not offer, you just need four other interested students and a faculty mentor and the university will support your endeavor. We are a test optional free application school. Our early action, um, early decision is November 1. You would have your decision before Thanksgiving. And throughout the rest of the year, we do work on rolling admissions. You can apply online at jwu.edu. You can mail in a paper app. We do still have them, shock and surprise, uh, or through the common app. FAFSA, for those of you who are still in your junior year, October 1 is when that's going to open for you. You're going to look for our code 003404. That is for both campuses. 94% of our students on ground, we do have a College of Online Education, which has a different set of requirements, um, do receive some form of aid. Our career outcomes rate, 97.7%, simply means that six months after graduation, just under 98% of our students are working full-time, uh, continuing their education, active duty, military, or missionary work. Uh, we do have study abroad available. We do allow you to do one of our two programs. So if you're unsure, you can do a business explorers program where you test out different fields of business your first year and decide what kind of sparks your passion. Or you can do university explorers where maybe you wanna cook, but maybe you're interested in the business of horses. We have an equine studies program in Providence at Well. So you are able to test those out during the school year. Uh, we do have an internship heavy uh, program depending on the campus, but you are eligible to do an internship and study abroad in your first year. Um, so you are definitely going to want to work with your academic planner once you get to campus to make sure that you have all of your ducks in a row before you get started at JWU. So please visit us. Um, we would love to see you. And we've got a lot of really unique career fields, things that you haven't thought of. So thank you for your time tonight. Good luck in your search. Awesome. Thank you so much, Johnson and Wales University. Another great presentation from a great institution. We're going to turn now to Butler University. Take it away when you're ready. All right. Um, good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Jerome DeWicke. I am the director of admission at Butler University. I've been here for about 20 years, and I work with all the students in North Carolina and South Carolina and uh, encourage you to visit campus. If you get the chance to see the picture here, we're located about five miles north of downtown Indianapolis on about a 300 acre campus. 
kind of surrounded by a residential area. It's very park-like, uh, very secluded suburban campus, uh, but still close enough to downtown Indy where you're able to take advantage of that. Um, I know you're getting a lot of stat statistics and figures and facts thrown at you, so I'm going to try to go a little bit light on that. Um, you'll see that we have just about 4,700 undergraduate students, uh, about 500, 600 grad students. They're mostly part-time working professionals, so they don't really have much influence on campus. We're primarily an undergraduate-focused institution. You're not going to have any teaching assistants, teaching classes. All classes are taught by faculty. You'll see a really low student-to-faculty ratio, 11 to 1. Average class size is 22, and only about 4% of our classes are above 50 students. Even in your first year, your required first year seminar classes are capped at 18. So first semester, second semester, you're gonna be taking classes that are below that university average. About 130 different student organizations, about 200 study abroad programs in about 60 different countries. Um, we have programs all over the world that we have advisors that can um, help you to determine what's your best fit for that. And it's one of the things that are we're very highly rated on in terms of coming up to that number one regional university in the Midwest. I always say to take rankings with a bit of a grain of salt, look at the things that are beneath those rankings that feed into those rankings, things like our commitment to undergraduate teaching, our study abroad programs, and other things that make up that ranking. That's the most, most important part. We have about 65 different majors divided up into six different colleges. We have our College of Communication, Journalism, a really popular sports media program, Recording Industry Studies, as well as Speech Pathology and uh, Communication Disorders programs. Our College of Education is one of our smaller schools, but very, very high quality. We've had 100% placement rate for about the last 15 or 16 years straight, so all of our students that graduate from COE are getting jobs in education. Our College of Liberal Arts and Sciences is our largest, includes great programs in psychology, biology, biochemistry, chemistry. We also have an engineering program that we partner with Purdue University on and a brand new sciences complex that is uh, currently about to be finished and then old sciences uh, complex that is going to be completely renovated. Our College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences, uh, those two programs are our most difficult to get into. We have a six-year pharmacy program and a four-year healthcare and business or health sciences program. Um, can lead you a lot of different directions. We do have one professional school, the Physician Assistance Program, where many of our students from health sciences will go directly into the PA program. Our Lacey School of Business uh, includes all the typical things you'd expect, risk management, accounting, finance. We have the first in the world student-run insurance company, um, chartered out of the Bahamas, so our students are writing insurance policies. Um, so it's a really nice opportunity for them and two required internships that are part of our Lacey School of Business. And finally, the Jordan College of Arts, which includes our top uh, three or four in the country ballet program, as well as music and theater programs. As I said, we're in Indianapolis. Indianapolis provides a great opportunity for our students. We kind of provide that small school experience, but still have Division I sports and access to a large city um, where we really accentuate the opportunities with the sports teams, with the motor speedway, with the race teams. Uh, with the major museums and cultural uh, opportunities in Indianapolis as well. So we try to have a good mix of the professional and the social and um, the fun stuff in the city as well. Kind of jumping into our admission process, um, talk a little bit about what to expect as you go through the process. Typically about August 1st, our application will open. We do accept the common application or the Butler application. Either one is acceptable. Uh, there's no preference to one versus the other. And we do have no application fee on that as well. November 1st is our early action deadline. You're going to be eligible for all the different merit scholarships as well as some application based scholarships that are tied to that November 1st date. We typically start sending decisions out late October through uh, December. And if you apply by that November 1 date, you will have your decision by mid December at the latest. Uh, we recommend filing the FAFSA for all our students, even if you feel like you may not be eligible for aid, because we do review not only for federal grants and loans, but also for Butler grant money that may stack on top of your merit scholarship. And then you'll see we have a regular decision deadline on February 1st. You're still going to be eligible for our main merit scholarship. Some of the application-based funds will go away by then. So the vast majority of our students do hit that early date for applying. A little bit about our, our academic profile. Um, ACT for the last number of years, our middle 50% of our class is typically between about a 24 and 30, SAT between about 1150 and 1300, and our weighted GPA between about a 3.7 and a 4.2. 
So the pieces of the application, I do read your application. We do a holistic review. We all have different territories. We hand read our applications. We do not have app readers that we outsource to. Um, so we try to get to know our students from the very beginning when they are freshmen or sophomores all the way to the point where they end up at Butler. So we get to know you through the process. As I mentioned, we do accept the Butler or Common application. The context of the application is we are reading it. We're making decisions. Obviously, we have a requirement for a writing sample personal statement or essay either prompts on the common application or on our application that you can submit. Um, your official transcript and secondary school report, some of the context of the things that we look at when you're, when you're applying is the program that you're applying to and how the, your curriculum matches up. So if you are looking at a STEM field, how are you doing in your math classes? How are you doing in your science classes? Are you seeing, uh, are we seeing an upward grade trend in those? Are you taking aggressive courses and advanced courses in those areas? Those are some of the things that are cont contextual things that we look at as we're making our, our admission decisions. We look at the strength of your school uh, and that obviously plays a part as well. And we have gone test optional for all of our programs. So ACT, SAT scores are, uh, it's entirely up to you. This year we were about a 50-50 split. Um, if you feel like they're representative of your abilities, absolutely send them. If you don't feel that's the case, then absolutely do not. And then your obviously your resume, letters of recommendation are optional as well. So thanks for listening to me. Uh, any questions or anything, obviously send those out to the Q&A and we will try to answer them. And please follow up with me if you have any questions after tonight. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thank you, Butler University. That was fantastic. I want to remind all of our attendees today that we have the Q&A function open. So if anyone has questions for any of these institutions, make sure you take advantage of that. But we are going to turn now to Nova Southeastern University whenever you're ready. Thank you so much, Jeannie. And like she said, my name is Julia Severance. I am an admissions counselor here at Nova Southeastern University. And if you like what I have to say today, definitely scan that QR code so that we can get to know you better and start sending you more information about NSU. So just to get us started, we are a private selective research institution here in sunny South Florida. And really our timeline is super unique compared to the rest of the universities out there. So we originally started as a doctoral program moved into our master's degree and then officially opened up our doors to the undergraduate level. So although we have 20,000 students on our campus, only 5,600 of them are actual undergraduate students here. And that really gives us a great opportunity to have small class sizes and a really community feel here at NSU. So our average class size is about 17. However, I've seen it anywhere from five to 30, depending on what class you're taking and when you're taking it. Another core value that we have at NSU is diversity. So not only are all 50 states represented, but we also have over 100 different countries as well on our campus. And we really prioritize mentorship opportunities. So you will have a dedicated career coach for all four years that you are here at the institution to help you not only with your classes, but what happens after college and those next steps. Uh, we do have um, a lot of research that happens. We have an entire um, building dedicated to research on our campus. So over 225 research projects really ranging in what their focuses are in all types of fields. Um, not only the last thing I want to mention is we are highly ranked not only on Forbes uh, top America's best colleges, but US News as well. So we do have over 50 undergraduate degree programs. The ones listed on the screen are just some of our big and major ones. Um, we do have some expedited programs um, for our dual admission and other premier programs that students can, can get involved in as an incoming freshman. So if you are interested in learning more about those opportunities and how to interview for those spots, definitely feel free to reach out to me. But just moving on to oceans of opportunities here at NSU, one thing we do require for undergraduate students is Excel units. So although we require six, many of our students end up leaving with more than six. You can get them through internships, study abroad, travel study, having webinars, um, you know, attending webinars or having one-on-ones with your career coach. And then again, lastly, hitting on that research field. So not only do we have um, opportunities for students to get involved on our campus, but also in the South Florida area, we do pretty much go everywhere um, other than Antarctica, but if you are willing to go there, definitely let us know and we can work something out for you. Um, and then lastly, again, uh, we do have an oceanographic center that's just 30 minutes south of us in Dania Beach. And that's where a lot of our coral reef restoration is happening and anti-cancer therapies. So definitely a lot to see, not only on our main campus, but our surrounding um, area as well. 
So I do want to talk a little bit about what there is to do on campus life. So we do have uh, 17 NC double uh, A Division two teams. Uh, we don't have free tickets to the Miami Dolphin home. We don't have free. We don't have a football team, but we do have free tickets to the Miami Dolphin home game. I um, mean, we also shuttle you and your family to and from those home games because nobody wants to be stuck in Miami traffic by themselves. Trust me, been there, done that. It's not fun, not worth it. And we also just want to ensure the safety of our students here at NSU, and that's something we prioritize um, and continue to do so throughout this global pandemic. So we also have a hundred and over 120 uh, different clubs and organizations, anywhere from Greek life, hobby-based, uh, career-oriented, and so much more. And our uh, participation rate is so high here at NSU because not only is there something for everybody, but you can also start your own club or organization with just six students and an advisor to oversee your club. So I do want to talk about location a little bit. We are so centrally located here in South Florida. It's amazing. So not only are we 15 minutes away from Fort Lauderdale Beach, but we are also one hour away from the Florida Keys and three hours away from the second happiest place on the planet, NSU being the first, of course, and Disney being the second. So definitely a lot of trips that happen throughout the year where students are exploring this area, not only South Florida, but in that mid-Atlantic um, area as well. Uh, so our average temperature is 77, but if you're from Florida, you know that's a little bit cold here. Um, and we do have a lot of community service that happens be, um, on our campus just because our students will literally give any excuse just to go to the beach. So that pretty much concludes my presentation today. If you had any questions or concerns regarding some of the scholarships opportunity that we host for our incoming freshmen or some of those premier programs where we reserve, have reserved seats for our students um, at the doctoral and uh, master's level, definitely feel free to, again, scan that QR code and reach out to me directly. Um, we are also on social media constantly updating that information. So please, please, please um, don't be afraid to share because we love sharing our students. Um, also, just to mention, we are doing campus tours right now. Um, not only are they virtual, but in person. And we have decided to go test optional for our next incoming class. So please do not feel that you need those in order to apply at NSU. And I look forward to reading your application in the next upcoming weeks. Bye. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Nova Southeastern University. That was great. We're going to transition now to the University of Pittsburgh. Take it away when you're ready. Hi hey there, Carrie Meeks Griffin from the University of Pittsburgh. Give me just a moment here to get started. Okay, there we go. Uh, University of Pittsburgh, one of the oldest colleges in the entire country, founded in 1787. We have 19,000 full-time undergraduate students, so a nice medium-sized institution. We are located in the city of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, even with 19,000 full-time undergraduates, we have a 14 to 1 student to faculty ratio. We are a major research one institution, division one athletics, members of the Atlantic Coast Conference. We have an urban campus, a diverse student body from all 50 states and a number of different countries. Our students are described as passionate, compassionate, and collaborative. And we have a network of more than 300,000 alumni, including Nobel Peace Prize winners, uh, founders of important nonprofits. And then of course we have uh, outstanding faculty, including pictured down there, Jonas Salk, inventor of the polio vaccine. As I said, we are in the city of Pittsburgh. This is a picture of our campus. We are located in Oakland, which is a neighborhood of the city, which we also share with Carnegie Mellon University right next door. Oakland is home to the University of Pittsburgh and of course the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center with five teaching hospitals in the area. And then we are three miles from downtown Pittsburgh. And you can see this is from the other angle. Uh, the city of Pittsburgh is known as one of the country's most livable cities. It's an affordable city, especially on a student budget, budget and our students get to take full advantage of everything that the city has to offer with utilizing free public transportation with their Pitt student ID. Uh, this is the business and financial district. The city of Pittsburgh is rich with cultural and theater events. Of course, uh, major sports. You're not going to think of Pittsburgh and not think of sports um, and definitely a major foodie city as well. 
Now we are located on the western side of Pennsylvania, so a little bit closer to Ohio um, as opposed to, uh, actually my little label <laughs> pick got put on the wrong side here, but we're on the other side where that little star is. I'll have to fix that later. Uh, but we are easily accessible from the Carolinas, whether you're driving or you can fly directly into Pittsburgh International Airport and utilize the public transportation for free to get to our campus. We do have all four seasons here in the city of Pittsburgh, so just something to be prepared for you may see some snow as a Pitt student. Now of course we have academics, uh, that's what you're going to college for. We have more than a hundred different majors in a variety of academic areas. Our Kenneth P. Dietrich School of Arts and Sciences is our largest undergraduate school where if anyone is undecided this is where you'll begin your studies and also for our students who are interested in anything in the social sciences, humanities, natural sciences, arts. We also have our College of Business Administration. Our business students on average are completing at least two internships, so they're really focused on hands-on education. Strong Engineering Program, which our students participate in the co-op program. School of Computing and Information, one of the oldest programs in the country. Highly ranked School of Nursing. We also have our upper level programs where you would start out at Pitt in Arts and Sciences, and then you could pursue different academic areas of study as an upperclassman Pitt student, including programs programs in the School of Health and Rehabilitation Sciences, School of Pharmacy, School of Education, and School of Social Work. If you want to take your education to the next level, you can apply to our Pitt Honors Program as part of our general application process. Pitt Honors is really for students who want to expand on their application um, and take things to that next level. They also offer opportunities such as more intensive coursework, opportunities for honors housing, priority course registration. They all also help our students compete for national and international scholarships like Rhodes, Marshall, Goldwater, Fulbright. We're one of the leading producers of Fulbright scholars for the past 10 years. So they are very successful in uh, helping our students secure those opportunities. We also have admission to some of our graduate and professional schools. So if you're already thinking about that next level, we can review automatically as part of our application process for one of our graduate or professional school programs. You'll just indicate that on your application. Now, outside of academics, there's going to be lots to take advantage of Pitt. Of course, being a research one institution, we're really going to encourage you to take advantage of undergraduate research, no matter what your major is. And you can start participating in research opportunities as early as spring semester, your first year at Pitt. We also have over 400 different student organizations, opportunities for study abroad, commitment to service learning. And we also have a very strong relationship with our community and encourage our students to take advantage of volunteers volunteer opportunities within the community. And then of course, being so close to downtown, which is about three miles from campus uh, for internship opportunities. And we do guarantee every student at least one internship as part of their undergraduate career. Application process, we take the common application, the coalition coalition application or the application on our website, whichever one is easiest for you. We are test optional. We prefer you complete a self-reported academic record in lieu of submitting a transcript. You have the option to submit additional information such as a personal statement and other supplemental information, whatever you think will help the admissions committee get to know you better. And do keep in mind, we operate on rolling admissions. So the sooner you apply, the better your chances are for admission and merit-based scholarships. We do have a 94% placement rate and Pitt is known as one of the top colleges that pay you back and one of the top values in the Northeast. And there is my contact information. I am the rep for the Carolinas, so don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions and hail to Pitt. Fantastic job, University of Pittsburgh. Thank you so much for that wonderful presentation. We are heading into our last individual presentation and we are going to hear from Catawba College whenever you're ready. Hello everyone. Thank you for the opportunity to participate in this wonderful uh, event. I am Dr. Ty Nance, Senior Director of Admissions at Catawba College. And I'm going to share my screen right now. All right, Catawba College is a small private liberal arts college that has a strong vocational focus. We are located in Salisbury, North Carolina. 
We are about 35 minutes from our state's very own Queen City, Charlotte, North Carolina. So we're somewhat of a suburb of uh, Charlotte. We have about 84% of our students uh, who reside on campus. So we do have a very, very active and thriving campus life. Uh, very diverse campus out of 50 states in the United States, we have students who represent more than half in 19 countries across the globe. Here are our different schools of arts and sciences, business, education, health science and human performance, as well as performing arts. If there is no major that seems to fit you, you are also allowed to or assisted in uh, customizing a major to fit uh, potentially your career goal. Classes are small, uh, indicative of our small campus, uh, 12 to 13 students for every faculty member. None of our classes are taught by teacher assistants, so all of your classes will be taught by Dr. This, Dr. That, Dr. This, Dr. That. Division two sports are, at, are offered here as well. Uh, as you can see, we have a, a wide variety of sports, even developmental sports, intramurals for any of us who are not interested in playing organized sports, but just like to have a little fun. And of course, 40 or more clubs and organizations. Uh, potentially, if you have a hobby or some type of special interest, uh, chances are there's someone or some group on campus that would share that interest with you. Our impact, of course, is for our, our attempt, uh, intended impact, I should say, is for students to come to Catawba to be transformed into the career person or that graduate student they are looking to become. And of course, they are. it is incumbent upon us as Catawba uh, employees to inspire them to do so. And of course, uh, here at Catawba, we always feel that students uh, should feel that they belong. And as you are a part of the Catawba family, you will engage in research opportunities, international and domestic travel opportunities as well. And you will be connected with networks who can provide you internship and practicum opportunities along with volunteering. All of these things make a well-rounded student. And of course, Catawba uh, certainly uh, values each of these as uh, penance to those who are looking to move to those next steps, whether it be career or grad school. And speaking of which, many of our students do uh, go on to grad school after they graduate from Catawba, about 90 something percent, I'd say about 99 percent of our students do move on to grad school or move right into that next uh, opportunity in that career field that they have pursued. Our tuition at Catawba is 42,000. Actually, it's 43,510 as of most recently being updated. And 100% of our students uh, use financial aid to finance or help uh, sustain the cost of tuition. And we do it by offering uh, department scholarships as well as uh, scholarships of distinction. We offer two of those that are full tuition. And here are the requirements. And we also offer, as of this year, the Catawba Promise Scholarship that has been uh, provided to us to offer students an extra opportunity to sustain the cost of tuition. Uh, of course, some of us have been adversely impacted by the pandemic. So our institutional leaders thought that it would be very helpful and beneficial for students to take advantage of these new opportunities. And of course, for any student who is interested in learning more about Catawba, we are open for campus visitors. You may go to our website, which is www.catawba.edu and find out which date or determine which date best suits you. We are also a test optional campus. Most recently, we have decided that ACT and SAT are no longer something that we are requiring. So students are able to apply uh, with no ACT or SAT score, you would only be required to submit a writing sample. And I believe that is it. Normally we would ask for a letter of recommendation, but we are also waiving those as well until, until further notice. Thank you so much for your time. Welcome to Catawba.
Fantastic. Well, thank you so much. That was such a wonderful panel of uh, fantastic institutions. We are going to transition to the next part of our session today, which is to take advantage of all of these experts that we have on the call today to get their advice and learn a little bit more about their institutions and programs. So I will ask all of our panelists to join me here on video. I'm going to share my screen briefly here, and we're going to kick off a very brief Q&A. The first question, and I will give a heads up that it may be the only question, is what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? We're gonna go in the same order, and so we will ask Rollins to kick it off. So there's so much advice to provide. I would say the first biggest one is to potentially start with a, a list of, um, of things that you're looking for in a college, things that you're hoping that will check off on the boxes and also to pay attention to deadlines. Look up what your college's deadlines are for applications, early decision, early action, regular decision. If there are separate scholarship deadlines, definitely keep track of all of those. Yeah, I can go next. I think one thing that I have to say regarding, you know, incoming freshmen and their, my biggest piece of advice is ask questions. We are all here to help you and get you through the next step of the process. So it would really be a shame for you not to utilize those opportunities and resources that are already available to you. And just if you do establish that as a habit in the beginning, it can really definitely benefit you um, moving forward. Hey, Lisa Johnson Wales again. Um, I, you know what, put yourself on campus. Uh, many times I have students who have talked about being a part of a specific university since they were kids. And then they get to the campus and it's completely different than they figured it in their mind. So put yourself there, look at the people around you, look at the community that your college is in because you're gonna be a part of that for at least four years and maybe for the rest of your life. Also keep a spreadsheet of the timelines for each of your colleges, uh, deadlines you know, that need to be met for different scholarships and start those scholarships early. Uh, if you put in a little bit of time every single day, I think you're gonna be really surprised with how much outside dollars you can come up with by the end of your senior year. So put yourself on campus, see if you fit. Hi, Jerry Dewicki from Butler University again. Uh, my biggest thing would be to not stress. Uh, most of you are going to apply to five, six, seven, maybe 10 schools. And chances are every single one of those schools is going to be a good choice. Um, it may not be your first choice. It may not be your second choice, but you're going to get a good experience and a good education from more places than not. So don't get too hung up on, you know, have a dream school, but have a couple of dream schools. Um, have a couple of places that you know you're going to be successful at. Chances are you're going to, you're going to do fine no matter where you end up. University of Pittsburgh. <laughs> Sorry, I was waiting and then I got confused. <laughs> Carrie from Pitt here. My advice is always, um, it's pretty practical, is to create a Gmail address just for colleges and make sure to have different folders and just sort everything into those folders, maybe even set up a rule so things go to those folders. So you can really kind of keep track of all the information that you're getting because you're probably already sick of all the information that you're getting, but there is definitely going to be very important information that comes to you, especially when it relates to the application process, offers of admission and next steps. So I just to stay organized, I think that's a good way to do it. And I don't know if I could say anything differently than, than what we've already heard, uh, but I certainly would uh, emphasize the visit, uh, visit your colleges. Um, it is certainly uh, discouraging to go into an environment and have that per perception. Uh, and then of course, get there and, and, and learn that is very different than what you perceive. So you should definitely visit. Um, and select more than one college. I, I certainly um, concur with that statement. So there you have it, folks. It is difficult to go last on this question because we have so many great experts with all this fantastic advice. Well, I just want to take another opportunity to thank all of our panelists here today. And I hope that all of our attendees had a chance to learn a little bit more about each of these fantastic campuses.
I also want to thank all of our attendees, whether you are here live or you are catching the recording today, we hope that you enjoyed the event. I want to remind everyone that this session is being recorded and that within about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording along with all of the other session recordings at strivescan.com forward slash Carolinas. I put that link in the chat for you all one more time. Lastly, there are two more sessions happening, so we hope that you will join us today for the other sessions taking place immediately after this one. But when you close your Zoom session today, you will get a very quick four question survey, and we hope that you'll also give us some feedback on today's event. All right, everyone, have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you so much for being here. Bye bye.